Countless train tracks lay in the way. Side by side they display their traces as if a horde of slithering worms had laid them as they squirmed through along the path. The tracks, they lay in the way. The noise on this side increases whenever I stand at the edge, just before the train tracks that lay in the way. The noise pulls me back, away from the tracks laying there, crisscrossing the path I must cross to the other side. It must be silent there on the other side, but worms have wriggled their marks upon this path and pressed upon it their foul print. I am disgusted at their sight. I am dazed by the noise that pierces my ears. The scent of the tracks revolts my stomach as I struggle to avoid regurgitation. This bitter taste makes itself known in my mouth and sickens me further. As I hold my face in my hands, my skin's touch is like a coarse patch of hardened scales. What am I? What is this place? Why me? Dizzy with discomfort, I stumble and fall on my knees at the edge of my world. A border drawn with crisscross train tracks laid out by oozing worms. There would be peace from such illness, if only I would retract back into the noise, if I would give in to submerging again into some other place, far away from the frontier to that silence across the path. Trains pass here, sick, scary, painful trains travel here and there in the endless crisscrosses of tracks laid out by the worms that keep them. Trains traveling in their tracks, surely keep me from crossing, from hopping over their criss-crossed regulation, over which they can exclusively move at all. I cannot go back. I shall not go back. I stand again. I press my temples with my fingers and shake off some of the haze. Then, I take a step forward. Like an instant bolt of lightning, a locomotive nearly crushes me as I halt just before its track. One of countless others that travel there over that crisscrossed path at the frontier to silence. Oh, I was nearly crushed. It is too much to bear this fear. At that moment, all of a sudden, faced with that dread of being crushed by the worm locomotive passing through at high impossible speeds right in front of my step, towards the other side of the path, right there and then, the prospect of going back to submerge into the noise behind me seems not only reasonable but desirable. It would be relief for this horror. I was lucky not to be blown away by one of these infernal machines and was given the rare chance to go back into my world and repent. My legs twitched as they were beginning the motion to turn back, but my will made them stop again. My world? What in there is mine? Everything I own is but borrowed until I pass away. Everything I achieved was but given to me. Everyone around me enforces my identification with my given place. It is all written there. By whose hand? Perhaps not hands, but by worms scribbling with their muck the script of distracting play whose characters are just like me believing I make choices in there and identifying with a name, a face, a cosmology of words and thoughts taking hold of my mind. No, nothing there is mine, I realize. And suddenly, that train finishes passing on that track right in front of me and disappears into the horizon. Ha! Ah.
I realized. I was given a name, a face, a part in a script to play. I was given framed choices to make within it, so as to strengthen my identification with these thoughts, either left or right, either up or down. And yet, here I am, just outside the noise, just outside the silence, in that path crisscrossed by train tracks laid out by these blood-sucking worms of time and space and mind and words. No words. These blood-sucking worms. Blood is their life. What is mine? There I was, having chosen none of the framed options given to me and taken all of them at the same time in an instant. Awakened, I felt, all of a sudden, as the clouds in my sight and the dizziness in my perception vanished. Awakened, I must be, for I have reached the border between the scripted stage and the silencing of words. And there it is, clearly, the path covered with tracks laid down in a criss-crossed chaotic pattern, seemingly and impossibly going in all directions, drawn by the goo of countless slithering worms. I step forward again, hopping over the track where the train had passed before. Time seems to be dissipating, for many other trains impossibly moving simultaneously over the tracks criss-crossing in front of me appear all at the same time, traveling through each other, blocking my path again. But now they travel slower, unnaturally slower and slower slow enough for me to read the inscriptions on the carriages as they impossibly pass me by all at the same time and impossibly over the same space. Names of people that had meaning, descriptions of places that triggered emotions, words of acts of pleasure and of suffering. They all passed slow enough for me to read them as they passed, written as they were on the carriages of trains, traveling on those criss-cross tracks that blocked my path, laid out by worms of time and thought. As emotions and feelings spiraled through me, as I witnessed those worded trains blocking my access to silence, I finally gave up hope. Yet, it wasn't hope for crossing the path of crisscross tracks to the other side that left me. It was hope altogether. Hope as the final gift taken out of the toy box is the most resilient to play with. But there, hope had shattered completely. I would not go back, for I had seen too much to be again amidst the noise of the play. I could not go further, for the trains with their carriages of words and thoughts blocked my way across. So there I was, hung on a cross of my own, hopeless but clear-sighted, losing track of time as those tracks that crisscrossed before me sustained and ordered the chaos of the traveling trains, impossibly, all at once. I was at the center of my cross, hanging upside down so that I could see the world as it really was and I could not get across the path 
away from the noise behind me and towards the silence in front of me. Then I realized, again. What keeps the trains moving? What are they made of? What fuels them? And it struck me, a knowing, inexplicable, impossible to know by the character or the actor in the play, only known by the hanged man on the cross amid the crisscrosses of the tracks that fight to confound him. The trains move because time ticks in the world of stages upside down. Thoughts make up the trains that travel orderly over those tracks chaotically laid down by the worms. Words fuel the thoughts that fuel the emotions that fuel the identification of reality that hold the carriages together. It struck me then, and trains that passed unnaturally slowly all around me had no words written on them anymore, none. No names, no descriptions, no codes. And as they passed, they waned into a traveling mist evaporating into smoke that had been set up in front of countless mirrors to seem real and many. But it was one single smoke, one darkness, one eye that was half crying, half loathing. I had then nothing but serene sympathy for that devil of pretense laboriously and endlessly self-condemned to keep up an illusion of divinity, of life, confined to dwelling in the fog of his own delusion. I had, like everyone in the upside-down stage, been of him and like him, as I too had identified with that one I am in the temple of my soul. However, now, I had slain myself, hanging upside down to view the world of fog as it really was, amid the criss-cross tracks of trains that vanished into the smoke of their falsehood. There, slain and therefore living at last, knowing and understanding the heavy burden of Hell's master that is also its main slave. Silence came. I had crossed into truth where words are not spoken.